Hello, um, today we're going to uh, do some practices on how to fix the iPhone 6 without the backlight. First, we will disassemble the phone. Oh, um, before we actually disassemble the motherboard out of the chassis, we could um, simply use the multimeter uh, to, to measure the connector. Oh, the measurement is, uh, we try to get the measurement of the resistance. As you can see, one of the pin on the connector the rest the measurement of the resistance is uh, normal it's uh, lower than usual so we we have to check what where the problem is And then after that, we can just disassemble the motherboard. Since the components that's um, related to backlight problem is uh, cover under the uh, under the cap, so we will have to take off the cap first. Uh, we apply some heat with the heat gun and using the tweezer to sim uh, to simply just peel off the cap when the temperature is reached Uh, uh, okay, first we will examine the difference under the microscope and uh, quickly we found this uh, diode it's, um, it's like fried, it's been damaged in uh, appearance so we will have to change it for sure and normally in this case uh, not only the diode but also the coil, the capacitors, and but sometimes the um, backlight IC is, is damaged will cause the same problem. And first we would uh, we will have to um, apply some of the dissolvent that we bought a few days ago. It's a relatively a uh, new method. Sorry, um, it's, it's a new method that we we found is pretty useful to um to simply just apply to onto the underfill and then wait about fifteen minutes and then we can simply scrape out with blade uh, scrape away all the underfill very easily. So we think that um we will recommend for all the repair person to get in this um, dissolvent.
Uh, we fast forward a little bit because uh, this is uh, just whole process of uh, getting away all the underfill and also the cleaning. And we would um, we would try to remove all the underfill on on the surroundings because um, the underfill when it gets hot it might cause uh, it expands. So it might cause that uh, small uh, components uh, disconnect from the motherboard, and the, uh, after that we have to find out the we have to deal with other problems. So we would recommend to simply just um, take off all down the field at the same time. Um, we apply some flux, trying to get to take off the diode which we think um, it's, it's obviously a uh, broken one. In this case, we're simply just using the iron, uh, soldering iron tip to um, take away that damaged dilute. And next, we, um, we would uh, have to, we would have to take uh, the capacitors there are three capacitors consist in the, um, um, on top of the uh, backlight IC. Okay. Uh, normally we would just take three of them off, but uh, once you take them off, you could you, you could um, measure the resistance just to check uh, if it's back to normal. If it's not. Just simply take the three feet of, uh, three of them uh, off, and then the process is uh, basically just clean up the motherboard. Uh, this uh, three capacitor, the specific uh, the specification we could check um, under the schematics. And later on, we would we would show um, just a little bit modify how we could simply um, simple uh, simplify our jobs uh, rather than just um, put all the capacitor back. Mm, right now, it's uh, it's about cleaning the motherboard and. We have to make sure all the tin is taken away by the week. Okay, after after the capacitors, we now can take off the the coil. This coil is pretty fragile. Um, in many cases, is um. It's caused by this coil, but since uh, we're doing the the practices uh, demonstration um, for this, so we would take this off as well. To take it down, we could apply some heat using the heat gun. The temperature is around 340, and the airflow is 40. And, and the coil is, is fragile, so um, we, we, we could use the the blade to simply um, peel off from the motherboard, and then using the soldering iron to clean clean up uh, the rest of the components. Uh, this is just taking off some of the extra on the field that we were unable to um, to clean when the coil is besides the uh, 
back like I see. Uh, this is actually a common fault on iPhone 6 model, also iPhone 6 Plus. Okay, that's the that is the coil that we would replace, and that's the capacitor, and also the dial. Just a moment that that is coming up. Here you go. And it's because the orientation, we would um, we would start from the smoke components first, because uh, when the coil is off, it gets. We get uh, more space, so it'll be easier for us to starting back this dial first. And we would have to apply some um, low melting point tin onto the motherboard first. And then because uh, this component is very very close, it's just next to the CPU, so uh, we could use simply just using the uh, solder iron to solder the dial back. And then next, we are going to deal with um, the coil. First, we will apply this um, solder paste. It's a low melting solder paste. The melting melting point is around 138. Don't apply too much, cause um, yeah, that's a full demonstration. Don't apply too much. If it's you, uh, if you accidentally you apply too much tin onto the the motherboard, you have to take away some using the solder using the week. The coil is actually next to the CPU as well, but uh, since it, the the dimension is, is quite big, he uh, can still is the, the best choice for putting back this like, this component. But uh, keep in mind the temperature and the time duration of putting back this coil. Don't don't apply too much time on onto the motherboard and it's so close to the CPU so we have to be very careful okay this is the bigger capacitor it's a uh, 10 US and uh, 25 volt 25 volt uh, capacitor this is the modify modification that we, we mentioned earlier we could use um, this bigger capacitor instead. First, uh, we would um, use the uh, UV mask to uh, insulate uh, the pin that is unnecessary. And 
and then we had we would apply some some the soldering paste onto the motherboard, and then later on it's it's, it's for the soldering back this um, big capacitor. Uh, this end is actually GND, so it, uh, it requires a little bit more of the tin than the other end. Okay, this is um, some modification that we use. So we have we don't have to use too much. We don't have to put all three capacitors back. And after we sort in by this capacitor, we have to use the multimeter to check the resistance on both ends. Make sure it's not shorted and make sure it's uh, connected uh, well. Okay, the resistance is correct. And then we will measure this um, pin on the connector. And it's all back to normal now. But just before we put back the motherboard into the into the chassis, we we start, we would check it again using the motor printer. And when when it's checked, and the measurement the reading of the measurement is correct, and we start to make our first tryout. Putting my all these um, all these connectors and or uh, antenna first before we actually plug in the battery. Uh, in this case, this screen is actually con uh, actually harder than usual to assemble for some reason. screen is come is coming up since I we narrow narrow <coughs> down one problem all right the screen is back so 